Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. Ow! Mother, mothers, we all love them and we all need them. I mean, literally, we need them to exist. All right, all right, all right. So today I'm reacting to Nestor Hato, a magician from France appearing on Penn & Teller's Fool Us. Apparently he's some kind of super slick card magician, so it'll be really interesting to watch, especially because I love card magic. How about you? Smash like! Too early? By the way, before we get started, you may have noticed the background is different. That's right. Yesterday, I signed a one-year lease. This is my new flat. So get used to it because you're going to be seeing a lot of this. Anyway, I got this flat because I wanted it to be a great background. And so I'm going to try shooting different kinds of videos. I'm going to do more magic tutorials. Expect some more variety coming soon. Under promise, over deliver. Maybe some new type of videos. Maybe soon. And they'll probably be really bad. Smash unsubscribe. But anyways, I just wanted to share this good news with you. I'm very excited to have this new place to film in. New background! Anyways, with that flat slash background update out of the way, let's proceed with the reaction. Let's just hop right into it. I'm Nestor Hato, I'm from France, and I'm a card magician. Magic teach you how to be curious. I want to learn origami. I tried martial arts. I tried played billiards. I practiced jungling. I tried many things and always come back to magic. Magic never bored me. When you start to learn this really hard move or really hard technique, at the beginning, you feel like it's impossible. But at the end, when you really know how to do it, it's like riding bicycle. I have a trick, one special trick, that fools some really famous magician, really known, some big heroes of mine. Every magician likes to be fooled, even pen and tear. Wow, this guy looks really good. Looks like he's got some talent. Good evening, everyone. Ben, Taylor, my heroes, I have a present for you. Please, would you mind to join me on your stage? And let's give them a big round of applause. Wow, so happy to meet you, so nice to meet you. So, there it is. First, I'd like to talk about the luck, la chance, and then <laughs> let's try something cool. Okay. As I refill the pack like this, you tell me stop. Are you ready? Yeah. Go. Stop. Stop here. Look, that's one, that's two, that's three, and four of a kind. The four king for the French man. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I like the most about getting lucky? You never know when it will happen. It is surprising. And when you get it, it feels like Magic, watch. Hey, see. Like real magic. Oh, nice. Mm. Wow. But this only proves that the harder you walk, the luckier you get. Let us really experiment the luck. Go, shuffle, and maybe tell her, would you mind to put your index finger just like so? And don't move, never, ever. <laughs> Did you feel something interesting? I just gave you the power of luck. But don't go wild. It doesn't stay long. Look, all what you have to do is to touch four cards as I'm spreading the pack. But let's do this face down. Okay? Ready? You just touch how the card come. This one. Perfect. Another one. Which one? Okay. Seems like a really fair choice. Another one. Third one. Here. Perfect. And the last one. Nice. Fair? Good. Seems it so far. Look, no move. No skill. Nothing in my hand. You've touched four cards. Let's see. Should be one aces, two aces, three aces, four aces. Wow! <laughs> Formidable! Isn't that crazy? It even fooled myself. But there is only one problem. People never believe me. And do you know what I'm always telling? Do it again. Okay, so, shuffle and pen. It's your time to get lucky. Okay, good. Can you put your finger like so? Again. Again? <laughs> 
Taylor, I'm so sorry. It, it's gone. Forever. Ever. <laughs> Pen? I'm ready. I got the pack. You got the power. Let's go. Let's see how it goes. You touch four cards. Go ahead. This one. Another one. Nice. Oh, this one. Last one. This one? Yep. All right. Look, stare at me. Don't blink. Just for be sure. There is no aces on the bottom. There is no aces on the top. I mean, I'm not trying to help you. <laughs> No break, no turtle, and still <laughs> nothing in my hand. Only four cards. <laughs> oh, again, four aces. Wow, félicitations, you're the lucky winner. This time, just by your side, as I- Jeez, I just gotta stop and stay right now. I don't know how he's doing that. I'm kind of racking my brain, but you know, I've studied card magic a lot, and I practice it a lot, and he's kind of like proving that he's not doing it very carefully. And you even see from a, another camera angle, almost straight on at the cards, that they're definitely like four individual cards, unless it's like some of the special gimmick with like really thin cards that kind of stick together with some kind of rough and smooth surface. But it didn't look like that. They just looked like four cards. So especially if this is a normal deck of cards, I'm very impressed already. I mean, I already feel like he could stop now and that would be his routine, but he's got something more. So let's go ahead. You dribble the cap, call it stop. Ready? And nothing fancy, just for you. Nothing fancy. Here, look, no ace. Isn't fun? Isn't that fun? You can't get aces anymore. No luck, no ace. Look, try again, just for fun. Again, here, no ace. But Ben, you got the power, isn't it? Go ahead, say stop, whatever you want. Stop. Stop here, the six of ace of hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe here? No, no. I told you, it doesn't stay long. But this is Vegas, right? Let's go for the card of a last chance. And maybe, Alison, would you mind to call stop? Okay, stop. Stop here, and Alison, wow, King of Spades is a good card. But it's not an ace. No ace, no luck. But what if luck is believing you're lucky? Luck? is magic. One more time, look at this four card. Don't blink and believe. And let's gamble. It works. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Huh. Thank you very much. Okay, let me go ahead and give you my thoughts before we hear what Penn and Teller have to say, but that was just Really amazing. Okay, so the only thing I could kind of guess is that maybe when he was pulling the cards face up in the deck and he had them showing, maybe on the bottom card he had stacked up the four aces beneath it. So when he took them out and turned them all face down on top of the deck, all he had to do was take the top four off and show they were aces. But he was showing the cards very cleanly and Penn and Teller are standing right there and the camera zoomed in real close and it did not look like there were any extra cards. Anyways, I'm just trying to give you my best guess. That's, uh, I'm not sure. He fooled me for sure. I'm not sure and definitely fooled. Man, I mean, that was just really good. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hear what Penn and Teller have to say. Thank you. And to do it right there with them just free. Yeah, we were so close. Yeah. That's intimidating. Yes, that's really intense. They're very, very quiet watching you. That yeah. means I think that means they're confused. You sure? that's good. I don't know. It means I'm confused. Oh. Yeah. So do you do this trick in front of professional magicians all the time? Actually, that's my special trick I like to do for magician. Why? Um, because usually they, 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 they don't get it. Oh, so I love to do this trick. And who are your magic heroes? Um, one of them, actually, for me, the top one is like uh, David Copperfield. Oh. Yeah, of course. I'm a big fan of this. Ben and Taylor, of course. I'm following them since many years. It's like 
I can't believe I, we are there, you know? <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's see if the boys figured out how you did your trick. Okay. Ten, tell her. Okay. First of all, great routine. I almost want to skip over that because I'm so nervous about the rest of it. But it's a wonderful act. We loved it. It looked beautiful. It looked so magical. I mean, it's exactly what you want out of magic for things to turn into other things, for cards to turn into other cards, for uh, random cards to turn into important cards. is a wonderful thing. Now, I'm going to go through everything we've got here. It's going to be a little bit tough because it's hard to speak in code and cute little things when uh, you're speaking English as a second language, but I'll do my best. <laughs> it seemed to me that I saw, and it seemed pretty clear to me, that there were several moments in the routine when I saw you holding out a block of cards. And that's all we have. You fooled us. <gasps> <laughs> Man, he totally deserves it. go ahead and give you my closing thoughts. Yeah, as I said, I feel like he totally deserved to win. Even from the very beginning in his intro, you see him doing some impressive sleight of hand and cardistry. Plus the fact that he says he was learning all these other things like karate and juggling and pool. So I already had the idea that this person is the type of impressive person who works really hard and puts in the hours to get so good at something that when you see it, it's quite amazing. Anyway, I'm very happy that I was not let down that he had such a stellar performance. Also, I thought it was funny that at the end he says, oh, I can't believe like I'm here performing for Penn and Teller. Don't you think that at some point you realize when you become really good and that it's not so surprising that you're performing for Penn and Teller? I guess not. Either that or he was just being humble. But yeah, besides my little guessing that I kind of made earlier, those things I said, I was really rather blown away because I felt like the whole time I was just watching him so closely, as close as Penn and Teller sitting right next to him, I was just burning his hands in the cards. And especially that first one, it really seemed like the cards just changed. So yeah, just like he said, that's a great magician fooler. I would love to learn this routine. I'm curious if it's all sleight of hand in a normal deck of playing cards or if he's using some special cards. If they're not special cards, then I am even more impressed. Da, 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 da. All right, that brings us to the special part of the video and time for our first Aesop's Fables in my new flat. That's some kind of special thing, right? Comment below if you feel like that's a special thing. All right, all right, all right. So randomly selecting the Boasting Traveler, chapter 49 for those of you following along at home. The Boasting Traveler. A man once went abroad on his travels and when he came home, he had wonderful tales to tell all of the things he had done in foreign countries. Among other things, he said he had taken part in a jumping match at Rhodes and had done a wonderful jump which no one could beat. Just go to Rhodes and ask them, he said. Everyone will tell you it's true. But one of those who were listening said, if you can jump as well as all that, we needn't go to Rhodes to prove it. Let's just imagine this is Rhodes for a minute and now jump. <laughs> it's a good point. And the moral of the storyline is deeds not words. Yeah, I guess it's better to show you can do something than just talking about it. Uh, how can we apply this to our daily lives? Hmm. Is this story trying to tell us not to be that person at a party just talking about all the great things you've done before? But on the other hand, I mean, you're supposed to be able to share experiences you've had with people, right? Aren't we allowed to talk about the past at all? What did that have to do with him boasting about traveling? So he was boasting of his experience that not, everyone, that not everyone else gets to have. And on top of that, he was boasting about being able to jump high there, something he performed while he was there. That was his mistake. He shouldn't have talked about the jumping. If he just boasted about his traveling, no one could have said anything. So only brag about stuff that no one can challenge you to perform right now. Yeah, I think that's what we were supposed to learn. What about you? What did you think about this story? You have any ideas? Comment below. And thank you all for watching. Thanks for being here. I'm super excited to be here in this flat. I'm feeling lots of positive energy and I'm thinking about the new types of YouTube videos I can make here. Thinking about different camera lenses, different light setups, magic tricks, tutorials. Oh, what was that lesson we just learned? Deeds, not words. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be talking about all this. Maybe I should just do it. Just film those videos and upload. For everyone who clicks like on this video, I'm gonna 
really upload that much more because uh, because all right well anyways I hope you're having a great week and I will see you in the next video new background you